All right, hello everyone. My name is Gary and I am a data scientist out of the Galvanize Immersive Program here to proudly present to you my face mask detection model. So a little bit of background. The COVID pandemic is the greatest humanitarian challenge faced by this world today and vaccines are getting rolled out and everything is getting a little bit better, but there is a problem with not all the vaccines being distributed to everybody, whether people have access to it or not. And we do really have to be proactive since we do all want to go back to normal living. And since social distancing and wearing a mask are the only monitored ways to avoid the infection until vaccines become accessible, um, I really believe protocol detection is a big factor for us to gain some insight in how people respond to this virus. So as a disclaimer, this is not intended for any authoritarian approach to solving this pandemic, but does provide a lot of perspective on, on how people respond. Um, and we can pull precise statistics in real time monitoring with this model. And we can look at it more as sentiment analysis data from firsthand human interaction instead of through a survey or social media platforms or rating systems and stuff like that. And there really should not be any legal consequences for the decision one makes during the pandemic unless it results in violence. So there are two phases to this model. Phase one consists of loading the data set, training it with Keras TensorFlow, and then uh, serializing the model to disk. Phase two is loading that model from the disk, detecting faces in image and video stream using OpenCV extracting each face's uh, ROI or region of interest, applying the model to the region of interest in the face and determining mask or no mask. Now, the data set consists of 6,000 images split into two categories, with mask and without mask. And here's what it looks like. So we have a bunch of images and people are looking in multiple different directions so we can detect different areas of the face. Same thing with people wearing masks. And in the pre-processing, especially with image classification, data augmentation is a must. First, because you can take one image and you can transform it into multiple different forms of it. So say you have an image of someone facing you, the next image of will have that same person maybe slightly looking to the left, and the third one may have the image zoomed in, one may have it horizontally flipped, one may be in gray instead of in color, etc. It gives the data set more robustness and it lets your model have a better chance of learning more diverse patterns. And here's a little example of what data augmentation can do. As you can see it's one image and it is transformed into different um, versions of itself. Now, through pre-processing and training, I use Keras TensorFlow throughout the whole thing. And within Keras TensorFlow is an amazing pipeline called Image Data Generator, which does all of those transformations for augmentation in real time while the model is training. And it is very, very cost efficient. Um, excuse me, it's not as computationally expensive. And here is my pipeline and here's all those little transformations and it's going to be doing all of these in real time randomly. Now for the model, I used a convolutional neural network, which is a neural network specifically for image processing. And it is specifically able to take in pixel data and it actually mimics a lot of the behavior of neurons in the frontal lobe that take in visual stimuli in uh, humans and animals. And within that model consists of the base. And there's a really cool thing called MobileNet V2, which is a, a convolutional neural network architecture that is pre-trained. Um, it's very computationally inexpensive, even so that you can use it on mobile devices. And what is connected to that is the head. And this is going to spew the output from this base model. Now. As we look at the report from the model training, we can see our precision, our recall, and our F1 score, and overall we're doing pretty, pretty well. Now is for the fun part, getting to that detection in real time. So we use an amazing thing called computer vision, 
which is an interdisciplinary scientific field developed to make computers acquire high level understanding from digital videos and images, as you can see in this little GIF here. And so we make a model, we functionize it to detect this in frames, and then we deploy the actual stream, which is video stream. So I initialize it and then I plug it into that real time detection function. So I'm actually gonna demonstrate this right now. So let me go ahead and turn off my camera on Zoom so I can initialize video stream. Let me go ahead and initialize that. Just a little bit. All right, let me drag my video stream here. Let me take this guy off. And boom, mask, no mask, just like that. All right, let me end him. Let me turn my Zoom camera on. So for my future work, I plan on loading more image data continue to fine tune some hyperparameters so we can incre increase that macro and weighted average to greater than 95%. I would love to add a third class mask worn incorrectly. Also increase the range of the detection and have the model not mistaken any coverings of the nose or mouth as a mask because that's currently what it's doing right now. And um, I also want to use this model as a baseline for further, further COVID-19 monitoring such as social distance violation and also thermal scanning for temperature detection. And thank you guys so much.